the U.S. Uh, basically took over right after Spain um, uh, decided that it was, you know, that Spain's power, world power was dwindling. They needed um, they needed to sell the Philippines to the U.S. to um, basically just to, you know, make more money and like to, yeah, they, they couldn't uh, keep hold of the Philippines anymore. And the U.S. came and offered to buy to buy the Philippines along with Guahan, Puerto Rico, um, and other territories to um, under the the Treaty of Paris, um, and you know, like for for a lot of um, migrants and people in the Philippines, what they learn in the Philippines is that the U.S. saved the U.S. saved us from Spain, um, which is just an outright lie. Um, they bought us from Spain and. After that, the Philippine American War began because again, they did not save us from Spain. Like our people were were very much resisting and and understood that the US were not our saviors, right? But it's really through um, historical revisionism that that history gets lost. Um, and so during the Philippine American War, um, you know, uh, there was there was a policy of basically extermination. One one general, one US general, his um uh he gave orders to kill anyone over kill any boy over 10 because um if they are over 10 then they are capable of holding a weapon um and they would also you know herd people into concentration camps they would call them concentration camps and um just slaughter entire villages um and that you know that history is really not talked about that history of just genocide and violence um and um, also of note too, during the Philippine American War, of course, right, um, it, it's the same nowadays, right, that um, people of color, um, uh, working class peoples are the ones who are the, enlisted in, into the US's imperialist wars abroad, right, um, with promises of free education, free healthcare, you know, all those different things. Um, and so, of course, um, there are people from the US that were fighting in the Philippine American War, um, which included black soldiers. And there's um, notable examples of um, black soldiers who were sent over to the Philippines who actually defected and, and joined their revolutionary movement in the Philippines to fight alongside Filipinos. So um, there's also just in general, not only here in the US, but even in the Philippines, um, a very rich history of, of solidarity between um, our peoples, which you know, um, I'm very um, grateful to continue. Yeah, thank you, Matsumala, for naming one. Uh, Comrade General David Fagan was was one black soldier who fought on the, the side of the Philippine Revolution. Um, yeah, and so there, there's, again, there's just a really rich history of um, Filipinos resisting against US imperialism, US colonialism, US neocolonialism. Um, back in 1903, actually, um, it was uh, in Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines, there was the first Labor Day March um, where um, workers in the Philippines uh, marched and, and they, they uh, chanted down with US imperialism. So that was as early as 1903. Um, and then, you know, just in general, the, the, um, the history of resistance in the Philippines is so rich um, in 1942. Um, the Hukbalahap or the um, Hukpong, uh, Hukpon Labon Sa Hapon, which means um, uh, uh, the army against Japan um, was formed under the leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines back then um, uh, to resist against um, Japanese invasion during World War II. And um, during that time, during World War II, the US, there was like a period where they dipped out um, because during the war it was too difficult to keep a hold over um, the Philippines, but uh, General MacArthur famously, famously said, I shall return. <laughs> and um, so uh, the Hukbalahap, they successfully, through armed struggle, through armed resistance, um, and through guerrilla warfare, they are the ones who drove out Japan um, and protected the people against the atrocities that the Japanese imperialist army was, um, was enacting on you know the Filipino people against women especially um, 
And yeah, so it was the hukba lahak that successfully drove out Japan. But then again, it was the same story with Spain where um, we, you know, us as Filipinos were taught that the US again saved us from Japan. Um, when in fact, they just came in when Japan left and then their first act, um, the first act that the US did um, when they came back to the Philippines was they just bombed uh, Manila, like they leveled Manila with bombs, um, which, you know, again, it's it's not talked about, right? All it's talked about is, oh, Japan left and then the US came and then everything was okay, right? Um, and so this this history of counterinsurgency, um, again, I mean, it's all, it's related, right? Where um, counterinsurgency is not um, only about like violence or arrests, right? Which is like a huge part of it, but it's also about revising the history of suppressing um, our um, revolutionary history, our revolutionary um, uh, organizations currently um, um, to really sway the entire population against revolution, you know, um, and um, to make it seem as though um, the state is legitimate, the state is what will save us and has saved us, um, the current state at least, and um, that we need the state, right, as um, specifically the U.S. to to save us from ourselves, basically. Um, 